Welcome to this brief presentation on Donald Ross, an influential golf course architect during the golden age of golf course design during the 1920s, and one of the most prominent golf course architects ever. My name is Carl Dannenberger, Professor of Turf Grass Science here at The Ohio State University. Donald Ross was born in Dornick, Scotland in 1872. In the early 1890s, he went to St. Andrews and studied all the aspects of golf from Old Tom Morris, where he took an interest in golf course architecture and greenskeeping. He returned to Dornick Golf Club as greenskeeper. Under the guidance of the club secretary of the time, John Sutherland, who had an interest in golf course architecture, Donald Ross started developing his view of golf course design. Dornick Golf Club is a link style golf course where golf was reportedly played dating back to 1616. In 1886, Old Tom Morris laid out a more, what people would say, proper nine holes. He followed this up with another nine in 1892. This is a picture of the 14th hole at Royal Dornock. Note that the approach shot could be hit with almost any type of club. You could hit it along the ground, you could play a bump and run, or try to loft it into the green. Dornock's influence would be seen throughout Ross's designs. Donald Ross immigrated to the United States around the turn of the century and was the pro and greenskeeper at Oakley Country Club in Massachusetts. He turned the course from a rather run-of-the-mill layout to a challenging layout. James Tuft, of the Tuft family that owned Pinehurst in North Carolina, was impressed enough to ask Donald Ross to come to Pinehurst to design the golf courses there. The first course, number one, opened in 1901, followed by number two in 1903. Word quickly spread about the courses and raised Donald Ross to prominence. Donald Ross would go on to design or redesign 399 or so golf courses, with the most being done in the 1920s before he died in 1948 while designing Raleigh Country Club in North Carolina. He would normally make one or two site visits, but his detailed drawings were considered the highest quality and quite specific when followed. Here is a list of a few of the golf courses Donald Ross designed or redesigned or renovated. Here is an advertisement of Ross's design company that might have run in golf publications of the time. Although Donald Ross designed a number of golf courses, each course had a unique design. His design concepts evolved around making the courses appear as natural as possible, a variety of design concepts were used, and strategy would be needed by the golfer to successfully play his courses. For example, Donald Ross bunkering varied from grass-faced ovals shown here to sand-faced bunkers. His greens would vary from what would be considered punch bowl type design to putting greens that were crowned. Donald Ross would put considerable amount of roll into his greens mainly through mounding. Often his greens were tilted from back to front making downhill putts difficult. On many of his courses, the motto was, keep the ball below the hole. Although Donald Ross designed numerous golf courses, it is his work at Pinehurst, especially on the championship course number two, that he is best known for. Throughout his life, he continued to modify and fiddle with the course. As previously mentioned, Pinehurst is a resort situated in North Carolina. Its majestic hotel is shown here. During the early days, or when Donald Ross was there, the hotel was not air-conditioned until 1958. The resort was only open from late October through early May. The courses were also shut down except for one or two courses. Number twos always stayed open. During the early years of the resort, it was known to be very aggressive and many ways ahead of its time in marketing to potential customers and tourists mainly from the East Coast, to leave the cold winter weather and enjoy the warmer winters at Pinehurst. The advertisements often and 
continue to feature the iconic putter boy, which appeared in magazines to train stations, anywhere people might ponder the opportunity to go somewhere warm. Fortunately, change eventually comes, and although this early advertisement depicts the putter boy, it also depicts blacks at the time in a demeaning manner. The black caddy has been dropped from advertisements. Originally, the greens and tees were sand. Here's a picture of Donald Ross putting on one of the sand greens. The sand greens were smoothed out by hand with a drag mat. An employee or crew member would be stationed at each hole who would smooth out the green between each group. It was not until 1935 that these sand greens were finally sprigged with Bermuda grass. Here is a picture, I believe, of the sixth hole on number two, after being established to the Bermuda grass. Notice that the green is open to various shots, high shots, or a bump and run. Notice, too, that the green is not crowned like they are now. This picture of the sixth green was taken decades later, and from behind the green you can see how it's crowned, or sometimes referred to as a turtleback. Crowning came from years of sand top dressing of the Bermuda grass greens to keep them firm and smooth. Actually, prior to his death, Donald Ross was planning, or at least contemplating, on redoing the greens because they had lost their original design features. Through the years, Pinehurst evolved into a more lush golf course, with turf encompassing most of the playing area. This is a look back from the 16th green. Prior to the 2014 United States Open, the golf course architects Bill Coor and Ben Cronshaw restored Pinehurst to more of its original look and play. This is a picture again from behind the 16th green, showing the changes that have been made. Again, this is another example of the changes made. This is a picture of the 17th during the 2005 United States Open. And this is the 17th hole during the 2014 United States Open. This concludes the presentation on Donald Ross.